Today, we're talking about Kofax Power PDF, and we're going to answer two questions about it. One, what is Kofax Power PDF? And two, how does it compare to Adobe Acrobat? Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about Kofax Power PDF. Now, if the Power PDF part sounds familiar, Kofax bought Power PDF from Nuance. Nuance does drag and speak. More than likely, um, you've been to a healthcare provider that uses uh, Nuance for like dictation for medical records. So they bought that from them. So the first question is, what is Power PDF? It is your think of your reader that you use. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's Adobe Reader that you use. What Power PDF does, it gives you the ability to manipulate your PDF as you see fit. Let's say you have a document that you do every year, but you need to change some pertinent information like names and dates and things like that, where it has an editor and all that. So you can manipulate the documents, right? So it, it takes that power of processing and things like that and, and makes it easier. Let's look at design. When you open it up, it looks pretty familiar. It looks like the same design as Microsoft Office. And when you're in the office space, like I've said before, um, you have to, it, it behooves you to look like the, uh, industry leader. <clears throat> Two reasons. One, um, it's something somebody is already familiar with if they use Microsoft Office products. And two, if you are so different than anybody else, then it makes your product a little harder to use if it's not uh, of similar nature. Whether you love or hate the ribbon, you know, you have some people that love or hate the ribbon. Uh, it's there and it looks familiar, especially if you're dealing with a lot of, word processing products. It doesn't necessarily have to be just Microsoft. It can also be uh, only office or Libre or uh, some of these other ones that have uh, the ribbon. Uh, everything is clean. It has a really good UI user interface. Uh, it, it really, the, the experience feels modern. It doesn't have a, like a lot of free software. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of that older feel to it because sometimes when you're using free software or open source software which on this channel we love free and we especially love open source um because you're getting so many good functionalities the design isn't really kept up as much as some of the paid products so having a modern design makes things a lot easier when you're talking about uh using a uh, product let's talk about functionality Let's look at a couple things that's good about this program. So the big thing on the tab is editing, being able to take a text and edit the text or move an object like a picture or a box just to manipulate it the way you want to. The edit function works really good. And then there's a whole lot more functions on the edit. It's not just for edit and text, but as far as formatting document, as far as if you want to put a watermark on there, you can add sounds to a PDF. I don't know if you knew you could do that, but you can add sounds, you can add movies, you can customize your PDFs as much as you see fit. I've only had a couple PDFs that I've had sound on, but that is an option you can absolutely do. Now, the feature that I use the absolute most when it comes to Kofax Power PDF is the convert feature. So what you can do is you can go to any PDF that you have saved in a folder or anything like that, right click it, and you'll have an option now uh, after you install Kofax, it's going to be a uh, convert assistant. So you get the convert assistant and you can convert it to a whole bunch of different things. Like my favorite one to convert it to is Word because I find Word is easier for me to work in than Kofax. So I can convert this PDF to Word, make some changes, save it in a PDF form in Word and there you go. So I don't have to. And, and as far as like things that are lost, uh, it doesn't do handwriting so well, which, you know, that makes sense. But anything that's like scanned, it does a really good job of seeing scanned images, which happens a lot with a lot of PDF readers that if you don't have a good quality scan, then sometimes it can't read what's on the page. So even with low quality scans, I found that I still convert to like Word or something like that. Also, I've been able to do is take a picture of text and it's been able to read a good like 95% of the text and translate the text from the picture to a Word document or a text document or a spreadsheet or whatever you have, or even an Excel sheet. It'll do that also. 
The next section is the comment section. Like, why would you use the comment? Well, what, what is that for? Let's say if you're working on a team and you're trying to put out a PDF document, let's say for some type of health thing, or if it's some type of information that people need. So what it does is, let's say if I'm working on PDF and I send it to my supervisor or somebody else on my team, what they can do with comment is mark up the different things that maybe need to be changed or, hey, highlight this, make this bigger. So it's like kind of like a collaboration tool of sorts. You can leave comments on there, um, things like that to make the collaboration work better. Because sometimes in translation, let's say if you're sending an email, maybe... Um, you can't convey what you really want to about this program in an email, which, I mean, that makes sense. Um, it's all right there in the document, all your comments, all your annotations, things like that. So comment works really good in a collaboration setting. Now, the advanced processing tab is going to be, it doesn't seem like it's going to be very important, but I think it's really important for one or two reasons. One, as far as splitting your PDS, um, a lot of people may not need some parts of the PDF. So you can take the split function and be like, I just want the, on a 28 page document, let's say I want the first five pages here. Let's go ahead and skip these, the next 10 and I want the next five. So it lets you split it up as you need it. So the advanced processing gives you some of those functionalities that you kind of miss uh, with other products. It also has an index and that's really important for huge documents that are like, you know, uh, 800 page documents and you're doing research. And so if you can index it, so you can make it easier for you to find certain things. So you don't have to read through all 800 pages. I can just go right there to where I need it. So the indexing function is a very important function when you're talking about uh, big PDF documents. And my absolute favorite f part of the ribbon is security. Um, two main things. Um, one, it gives you the ability to hand sign any documents. I know that's a big thing nowadays. Everybody's trying to be digital, but some people don't, aren't ready to go full digital. So they still want to be able to hand sign a document, which is great. Uh, my problem with hand signing anything is that you have some very talented people out there and they can actually, you know, forge your signature. I'm not a big fan of that. What I am a big fan of is digital certificates because in we have this thing in cybersecurity called the CIA triad. And what it is, is you have to, everything you do in IT or security has to have these three main things in mind. It's confidentiality, integrity, and availability. When you're talking about digital certificates, integrity is what you are addressing on this one. Because if I say I signed it, with my digital certificate, it means it came from me. It's using a certificate that has my password. So you know that it came from me. So the integrity is still there. Um, with a hand signature, there's no way to, uh, to verify integrity. Because if I'm a good forager, you're not going to be able to see or know if I can, if that's a real authentic signature or not. It gives you the ability to create these certificates so you can go ahead and digitally sign your document. I know a lot of the U.S. federal government um, uses digital signatures. They've gotten away from a lot of the uh, hand signatures when it comes to uh, documents. You can also um, put a password on the PDF if, um, you know... It's something private and you just don't want anybody to be able to access it. You can lock your PDF up with a password and it's a hundred, a thousand 24 bit encryption, I believe, but don't quote me on that one. Also with power PDF, you have the ability to make forms as far as if you're making like an application for uh, a job or if you're trying to make a checklist for uh, your vacation or whatever type of form that you need, it makes that a lot easier as far as having like the text boxes with the checks and the radio buttons and things like that. So it makes turning a document into a form a lot easier. So that's another really big function that maybe you may not have thought of, but forms is something that, especially when we're trying to go to an all digital world, something that you should uh, be able to do or should be uh, wanting to do with a PDF as we go on uh, in this digital life. So how does it compare to Adobe Acrobat? With Adobe Acrobat, you have this yearly cost. Uh, it's something like 100 
50 or hundred dollars a year, every year, uh, which, you know, that's a lot to ask for a program, right? Um, it, it does have all the latest features and like, you'll never have to worry about being out of date and that's cool. So anything new that comes down the pipeline, you automatically get it. The two things that Adobe does that Kofax doesn't do. Um, the first one is going to be, uh, you can connect to other Adobe apps. So if you're already in the Adobe ecosystem, um, it makes it easy to go to other apps and, import things in and things like that. The second thing it doesn't do is with my job as working for a municipality, sometimes we get documents from the federal government and it, some documents has to have some type of Adobe security, something as far as I can tell, and that Kofax can't open that. So some documents you get from some sources, it can't open because of some, security that's only on adobe products other than that I, between the two i was able to do 99 percent of the things on kofax as i did on uh, adobe so all in all is this a good alternative to adobe acrobat for most people yes this is a great alternative to acrobat given that it has almost all the same functions as acrobat as 99 percent of people are going to need and it doesn't have that yearly cost. It's a one-time cost. Right now, it's like 150 some odd dollars or something like that. And that's it. One-time cost. And you have a pretty robust piece of software. And again, this isn't sponsored. It's just I saw a product out there, tried it, and liked it. What PDF reader do you use on a daily basis? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it. Thanks for joining me. If you like videos like this, check out the video that I did about the free alternatives to Adobe Acrobat. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.